Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, the place for blade lovers to learn about knives and hear from the makers, manufacturers, and reviewers that make the knife world go round. Coming up, we're going to take a look at five stories in Knife Life News. We're going to take a look at a knife gifted to me very generously from the edgy American, and then 10 great fidget knives. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from the Apex Alchemy channel. Uh, go check him out, uh, Apex Alchemy on YouTube. He says, uh, this was about the gift knife that I got that I'll be showing later. He says, Shane is a treasure to the community. That's Shane, the edgy American. Shane is a treasure to the community, as are you, Bob. By the way, the Knife Junkie podcast on Spotify keeps my 18 wheels bouncing down the interstate. I appreciate you and all you do. And I really like this comment for a couple of reasons. First of all, I couldn't concur more. Uh, Shane Gables is a treasure to the community. Of course, I love to hear that I, too, am a treasure to the community. But what I really like is imagining Apex Alchemy bouncing down the road in his 18-wheeler listening to this show. Um, first of all, the, the concept of driving around America, I love that because I've done so, so much road tripping in my life. I absolutely love driving and being on the open road. But also, I like the idea of people doing their work or doing their thing, sharpening their knives, dropping their knives, driving their 18 wheeler or running their forklift and listening to this show uh, because I, I have podcasts that I love that fill that same role. So to do that for other people, to know that I'm doing that for other people really puts wind in my sails. So thank you so much, Apex Alchemy. And thank you to everyone else uh, who watches, leaves a comment subscribes, which you might want to do right now. If you're not, thumbs ups us and checks out Patreon. I, I really, really greatly appreciate it, as does Jim. All right. All that being said, I think it's time for a pocket check. Today on me in my front right pocket, was the great and powerful Spartan Harzi folder. Uh, this is a knife that I could not wait to get my hands on. And when I did get it, they were in short supply. I know they uh, they uh, make batches of them and you kind of have to get lucky. And they also do a lot of really cool customized uh, work on the handle scales. Uh, this one has my logo on it, which was uh, very generously um, given to me, uh, if you will, by uh, Curtis Iovito after he came on the show. Send me your Spartan Harzi folder. I'll put your logo on it. Uh, before he was done with that sentence, it was in the mail. I really treasure this knife, not only because it is an incredible design by one of my favorite designers, Bill Harzi, and built like, an app, like the proverbial tank that we all talk about uh, by Spartan Blades, uh, but it really shares a lot of the qualities of the um, Hinderer XM18 and the Sebenza 21 that I love so much um, that this is one of those perfect knives. Uh, nearly perfect. I might have it hollow ground yet. Uh, I've had my eye on that for a while. I've talked about it. But then when I go down that rabbit hole, there are plenty of other knives I'd also like to have hollowed out. And something about this being a super, super stout um, knife, I don't know. I may, I may not. You'll find out when I do, but this was in my pocket today. Uh, someone hacked Bill Harzi's account, I think on Instagram, and uh, that's why that went in my pocket today. I saw it and I was like, I, I was scrolling through Instagram and saw someone mention that, and I thought that was real, real craptacular of whoever did that. Uh, Bill Harzi is one of the one of the absolute foundations and one of the uh, bastions of this of this knife industry, this knife community, such a great guy. He's, he's given so much to the community over the years, especially in terms of incredible designs, but he's a great man too. And to do that to someone just randomly like that is just really crappy. So uh, anyway, uh, I was carrying this in my pocket today for the uh, solidarity, if you will. Um, okay. Next up on my hip, 
uh, or uh, in my front left pocket today, it, it, it vacillates. It goes back and forth depending on where I put my phone. But today I had my Midnight Jack on me by Jack Wolf Knives. I do promise that I'm going to start carrying other slip joints other than Jack Wolf Knives um, sometime soon. But uh, this one is is up there in my is my top three of Jack Wolf Knives and just wanted it in my pocket because today I have a smattering of blade shapes. Each blade shape is unique and different, and uh, I needed a, a worn cliff on me. This is a great, great knife, this Barlow. It's a coffin-handled Barlow, so it, it has a, a number of different um, unique qualities from different slip joint knives in this design. And uh, it is so usable, so incredible. I always uh, remember when I first got this, I was able to use this very thinly ground M390 blade to slip between a cardboard box and a printing label without cutting either. I mean, I was careful, and I am a very skilled bladesman, uh, but this knife really, really crushed it. Loving this, and it's in green micarta. Micarta is going to be going away with Jack Wolf knives. That's just not as uh, doesn't sell as well as some of those beautiful fat carbons and and uh, car and camo carbons. What what's the other one? Carbo carbons <laughs> that they sell uh, with the beautiful dazzling colors and patterns. So uh, I have it on good authority that they will be in the next round of Jack Wolf knives. There will be different blades in these handles and uh, different handle uh, materials. So I'm, I'm very psyched to have a good amount of these uh, in my carta. Uh, just talking with uh, Patty this week from Patty's Potato Peelers, man, he got me all jazzed up on, on slip joints again, and, uh, and I'm, I'm bringing out the GECs. And, and I got to say, there is, as he mentioned in his interview, he keeps his Jack Wolf knives kind of separate from his other slip joint knives because with the modern manufacturing and materials, they almost seem like they fit in the um, modern folder category more than the slip joint category. I, I saw where he was coming from, and I think that's a pretty interesting take. All right, next up, on my hip today, one I haven't carried in, in a while, uh, the Ron Steele designed and created a custom knife, the Prime. double, And this one I had him double-edged. Now, I think uh, this is the only double-edged Prime he's done, um, if I'm not mistaken. I know it was the first one. And, uh, well, this is one of those knives that took me by surprise because I really like Ron Steele's knives and... Uh, uh, Justin from Tier 1 a few years back loaned me uh, a Prime, that's this shape, and then a Prime clip point that was absolutely gorgeous. And I wanted to order one from Ron, and strangely enough, I got the drop point over the clip point because the shape of this is so unique and cool. Uh, but I couldn't just leave well alone, well enough alone. I had to have him double edge it. And this is a really fantastic knife, beautiful knife, a little thick for me to carry in the waistband, uh, in the handle, but, um, you know, I powered through, I can manage cause, uh, well, cause I'm a knife junkie and I really wanted this on my person, uh, in that nice maroon, uh, linen micarta. I do love maroon linen micarta. I know that's exceedingly obvious at this point, uh, given, given all my talk of the Nova one. Okay, and lastly on me for emotional support, I had the AD 20.5, a knife I haven't carried in a little while. Uh, this is more of a summer carry for me. This is a light shorts uh, sort of carry knife. Uh, but today, uh, as I mentioned, I, I just had a, a, a feeling I wanted a, a number of unique blade shapes on me. And uh, it was the blade shape that... Um, got me to choose this one uh but it was the uh, imminent fidgetability imminent it was the um amazing fidgetability of this that gave me emotional support and probably drove everyone in uh, earshot nuts but you know what we were all going nuts uh last week and this week so um you know a little little bit of little bit of clickety clack ain't gonna kill anybody and uh there you have it. This was my carry for today. For uh, uh, for this day, I had the Spartan Harzy folder, the Midnight Jack from Jack Wolf Knives, the Double Edged Prime from uh, Ron Steele Designs, and the AD 20.5 from uh, 
Demco Knife Company. I am so psyched. Uh, we were just talking before we started rolling about Blade Show uh, coming up. It's coming up quickly. You know, I I, I don't want to sleep on it and, and lose my chance to go. But um, I was thinking in particular about the Demco table last year and, and the year before, but just how people sprint to get to that table when they open the doors because they know there will be some full tie customs and different blade shapes and stuff uh, coming out of there that you can't get anywhere else. So very excited about Blade Show. Uh, just a reminder, the pre-order for uh, my collaboration knife with Jack Wolf Knives is up until March 31st or 50 knives sold, whichever comes first. They will be numbered. You saw how that popped off. Such a great, great sheath. Uh, they'll be numbered. And uh, some people have requested special numbers. And uh, obviously, if we don't get to number 44, um, you won't be able to get 44. But uh uh, if we do, you can have uh, your choice of number between a 1 and 50, as long as it hasn't been taken yet, which I think is kind of cool. 44 I chose. It's always been my favorite number. Um, but I will let someone else have that because I have this sweet prototype. 154 CM blade steel, deep hollow grind uh, with a nice recurve uh, designed to be sharpened through over time, assuming you use that front belly portion more and sharpen it more. Um, it will. Uh, it comes with this uh, maroon linen micarta handle. And as we go from the Nova 1 to the Nova 2 and we change blade shapes, we will also change the color of micarta, the handle material. Who knows? might not be micarta. A um, couple of changes will be made. That row of jimping will be moved forward so that the thumb lands squarely on the jimping. The logo will be much smaller and will fit in the flat of the blade right up there. And uh, the liners will not be red. They will be a deep forest green. So go to theknifejunkie.com slash Nova1 to pre-order it. We have sold a... a uh, I'm excited because we've sold more than I thought we would originally. I, I thought we would uh, keep it to 10, but we have exceeded that order. And um, Jim always thought that was unrealistic. Maybe I was being humble, uh, but... I'm very excited. Uh, these are starting to move and uh, people seem to be looking forward to it. So do you want to carry a classic American Bowie knife on you on the daily? Well, this is a great way to do it with this uh, EDC fixed blade made by the great and powerful Matt Chase of Hogtooth Knives. And, uh, you know, I'm always pushing Hogtooth Knives. I love them so much. I carry them all the time. That's why I asked to collaborate with him on my first collaboration knife, because uh, I'm always carrying either the Tonto or the Ruffian. I wish I could carry that uh, uh, 50th birthday sub-hilt fighter on the regular, but, you know, people would be looking askance, and we can't have people looking askance. All right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at five stories in Knife Life News. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Uh, first story today is exciting news out of Sweden or Germany, depending on uh, where you heard about it. But uh, Mora Knife uh, or Mora Niv, I'm not exactly sure how they even pronounce it, but Mora Knife is uh, releasing and just announced at the IWA Outdoor Classic in Nuremberg. Um, a new line of knives, full tang with ash handles. Uh, they're calling it the Ash Wood Collection. Uh, this is exciting because more, well, for a number of reasons, more knives, uh, we've we've seen them. They, they all look the same kind of, um, and they're great knives. I'm not uh, trying to say that they're not uh, unique in their different designs, but these really take the cake. They are full tang, and they only have one full tang knife so far. That's the Garberg. So this the full tang with the wooden handles going back to their roots with the wooden handles. Uh, but this time it's ash and uh, they're featuring leather sheaths. They got four different versions. Uh, 
a small one, a this one, uh, the width of 4.5 inch looks really cool. And uh, uh, there are 3D machined ash uh, scales there, which I think is really cool. Interestingly enough, uh, they have uh, they are featuring uh, what they're calling Swedish recycled steel, uh, which is very uh, unspecific. And I'm not sure exactly what that means or what how, how these will perform. But I'm loving the way they look, and I love the idea of full tang. Look at that weird looking cleaver. I'm loving. Uh, I love the idea of a full tang uh, woodcraft knife. I mean, it just it just makes it seem like you could take them the extra mile and start powering them through um, materials in different ways uh, than you had the options before. They're available now in Europe. So if you're listening to me from across the pond, run out right now. Stop everything you're doing. Run out and get yourself a Mora Knife Ashwood collection. Very exciting. Next up, uh, Rosecraft. Uh, we know Rosecraft Knives, a, a new company as of last year. They did a lot of sponsoring at Blade Show 2021. Well, they are announcing six new slip joint knives in a staggered release for this spring. Um, some interesting stuff. I like these because they're kind of the same, but different. And this first one uh, really strums that chord for me. The uh oh so, oh i'm not sure how you pronounce that uh akoe river kayak um interesting uh this knife is interesting to me in particular this one on top because um we all know uh, about the um the canoe and this is a kayak it's got a very similar handle to the uh, canoe type knife but it has a reverse tanto a weird looking blade for a slip joint so that that is immediately interesting to me. And plus, I look at that uh, that dyed bone. It's absolutely beautiful. Scrolling down, they have a really nice looking uh, Barlow there um, with the uh, uh, Warncliffe blade with that heavy swedge up front. Very cool. The Beaver Creek Barlow. And then uh, uh, that nice looking dog leg that they call the French Broad Jack. The next one is a boy's knife, but it has a, a bit of a Barlow vibe to it. Uh, the bolster is not quite a Barlow bolster, but it it uh, it looks, I don't know, it just kind of has that sort of appeal to me, the Lusahatchee Jack. And uh, this one is the one I've, I've commented on in passing. It It's unique with that big finger choil, the Zambezi, um, but I, I find it... Uh, compelling but ugly like et you know the extraterrestrial kind of cute kind of ugly i don't know something about this knife uh i can't i can't look away from like a car wreck uh and uh, again that's not a diss of the design it's just uh, my mind has to wrap itself around a choil on a slip joint knife which makes a hell of a lot of sense that knife uh has no lock and it most definitely is not going to be closing on you because of that choil uh, but just uh, it takes a minute for my eye to adjust. Um, kind of a interesting design. Uh, last up, it's a big one, uh, the Riverbend. Uh, this is the second version of their Riverbend uh, Skinner. And it's a large one. The first one was nearly three inches. This one is nearly three and a half with a black bone handle. Very, very handsome knife, if you ask me. And I love that it has, yes, a lanyard hole. I'm sure that's an unpopular position to take, but I do like lanyard holes on larger um, slip joints. You see it on a couple of GECs, and you see it on the classic um, uh, Tony Bowes design, the back pocket. And that lanyard allows you to, uh, that lanyard hole allows you to put a fob on it, and then you can put it in your back pocket. The fob hangs out, keeps the knife oriented north to south instead of flopping to the side, which is, of course, annoying as hell. All right, next up from Dirk Pinkerton. Um, you know, I just put up a video on Saturday of my sub collection of Dirk Pinkerton knives. He's another one, man. I just, I love his work. He does both the production stuff that we see from some of our favorite production companies, uh, but he also is a master behind the grinder, uh, as you can see from a couple of the um, customs I have from him. But this one is a cleaver. And uh, I am ordinarily not much of a cleaver guy, but I really do like the, uh, this one's grown on me for sure. I love that big belly on the cleaver. I like the holes evocative of a classic cleaver that you hang up in the kitchen. 
and it's made by Knight. And uh, Shielden has OEM'd for quite some time, and now they're coming out with some of their um, some of their own designs. I had it reversed, and actually, uh, uh, Dirk uh, sort of corrected me gently in the comments on uh, one of his, the videos featuring his. I think it was Thursday night knives, actually last week. Um, Shielden has an OEM, and now they're starting to come out with their own designs. I kind of thought it was the reverse. Um, this one is a front flipper, small. It's like a 2.4-inch blade. Uh, another little big knife, no doubt, from Dirk Pinkerton. This is going to be 154 CM, G10, nested liners, and a liner lock. And um, he also mentioned he's going to send one around for me to play with. Uh, which I will appreciate. I will show off and then I will probably buy from him because that's that's how I do. Um, yep, looking forward to that. Deep carry pocket clip. Next up, this one is from a company that I swear it gets no play and and from myself, uh, myself included, but I, I have to change this. I would really like to talk to these folks. Uh, this is from Bear and Son. They have a sub brand called Bear Edge uh, and it's sort of a... Um, more budget line, I guess, um, or high value line. The reason I'm very interested in Baron Sons is they make all of their knives in Jacksonville, Alabama. These are a USA made knives. And we frequently talk and bemoan the fact that there, there are a few production knives made in the United States. Uh, but here we have this company, Baron Son, um, Baron Sons making them in Jacksonville, Alabama, even their, um, budget line or their, their high value line, like we see here. So, I think it's incumbent upon me and maybe some of us uh, who talk about American folders to check some of these out. Uh, they do some really nice looking automatics. They do bally songs. They do slip joints uh, and they do uh, fixed blades like big bowies. So a very unique company doing a wide variety of things. But this one caught my eye. This new 61125 rolls right off the tongue uh, by Bear Edge. Uh, it's a 3.14, I'm sorry, three and a quarter inch drop point, but kind of a modified drop point. Very, very handsome blade to me. I like that, especially the point. Uh, that's 440 steel. I'm not sure what letter follows the 440, but it's 440 steel, hollow ground, bearings, assisted. That might lose a few folks, but I would say well worth the the look because check out the those steel handles are so nicely milled with that elongated knurling and uh, the jimping on the bottom uh, the overall profile of this knife is very pleasing to my eye uh, it's got a reversible pocket clip and it's only 3.4 ounces uh, for a steel liner lock that seems to be pretty good to me also it's 70 bucks and it's made right in alabama so mm, I think I might have to check some of these out as some Baron Sons. I have a Bally song by Baron Sons, uh, but might be worth expanding the look. And I would love to get one of those folks uh, from this company, family company on the show uh, to talk and find out more about them. Uh, last up in Knife Life News, I want to talk about an article I stumbled on made me smile in a very snide knife lover way uh and and it's a um a pretty cool website called gear patrol gear patrol uh, but they have a knife um uh, they have an article on the 12 most popular pocket knife brands and then the most popular knife um in from that brand and a funny thing is the picture at the very top shows a shows a hand a man's hand holding a knife that i can't identify so it doesn't fall in this category at at all but um they start the article interestingly by saying the oldest known folding knife that's been discovered dates between 600 and 500 bc that's old it's believed to be of Celtic origin, featuring an iron blade and a bone handle, and they quip <laughs> and no liner lock. Uh, and I'm not making fun of them. I think that's a funny little quip. Anyway, uh, they start from the top. Benchmade bug out. Yeah, I'd go for that for sure. I do love the Benchmade bug out. And then, man, they throw a curve right away. The James brand, and to me, um, I would not put them up there in, in the 12 most popular. I'm not saying that they're not worthy of that. I just just don't see them there. Uh, Chris Reeves Sabenza, 31, plain drop point. Yeah, I can get with that, even though it's technically a clip point if you look closely. And next is the Kershaw Knockout. Uh, Kershaw, oh yeah. Knockout, um, 
If it's not, it should be one of their most popular, though they're not making it anymore. It is a USA-made knife. Uh, next is the CRKT Pilar 3. Um, sure. I love the Pilar uh, Vox design, and CRKT uh, has done a really great job on that knife in particular, updating it with different steels. Uh, and also this, the PLR3 different shape. And now they're coming out with a clip point that looks pretty hot. So um, next is the Gerber Fastball. And then this one really threw me for a loop. Wesson, the, the Wesson Almond Liner Lock. Um, really in the top 12 most popular knives, uh, folders? I mean, again, I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that Wesson isn't a good company um or producing good knives but this is definitely not one of the 12 most popular folders out there it is not uh so that's why it kind of makes me chuckle this one is though the open l number eight that is the classic size uh, that everyone should have if if not other knives they should have this uh in their um pocket uh, i was gonna say pocketbook in their um in their backpack or whatever. And my mom carries one in her pocketbook. That's why I said that I got her one uh, years ago. And uh, that is one of her main carries her, one of her main carries. It is her main carry. It's the only knife she has on her in her purse all the time. I did make her a little fighting knife to defend herself with that, that she also likes to travel with, but uh, the open L number eight, everyone should have one. And if you ask me, it should be a carbon steel version. And then, of course, the Swiss Army knife, and, and that would be the classic. Uh, everyone's got on their keychain, though they, they mentioned the ALOX, which is cool. Uh, but I would, I would beg to differ. I would, I would bet that that's not their most popular um, because it's more expensive and it's harder to find and it doesn't have the tweezers and the toothpick. And then lastly, the Paramilitary 2 by Spyderco. Yeah, of course, that's their most famous. Um, you know that knife speaks for itself um very very popular it is kind of the knife against which which we we measure most knives uh in a lot of cases so interesting article i love uh, getting the knife take from non knife people obviously they're gear people over there um it is a cool website you should go check it out um for sure uh, but it's always interesting to get uh, that's gearpatrol.com but it's always interesting to get a non-knife person's take on the knife world. Okay, there you have it. Knife Life News. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. I got one great new knife this week that uh, has not left my pocket. And then we're going to take a look at 10 great fidget knives. If you're a knife junkie, you're always in the market for a new knife. And we've got you covered. For the latest weekly knife deals, be sure to visit thenifejunkie.com slash knives. Through our special affiliate relationships, we bring you weekly knife specials on your favorite knives. Help support the show and save money on a new knife. Shop at thenifejunkie.com slash knives. That's thenifejunkie.com slash knives. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. This is my first Full size, regular size Manix. And it is the Manix 2 lightweight in CPM S110V. This was a gift from the great and powerful Shane Gables. You know him as Edgy American on um, YouTube. You probably know him as Shane Gables. He's a very popular guy because he's a very awesome guy. He's uh, He is the guy who uh, definitely with help um, but he started the um, Knives Live 24-hour YouTube marathon for knife rights uh, two years ago. And I had the privilege of uh, taking part in that this year. It was so exciting, so cool, so fun, and raised a lot of money for our favorite organization, Knife Rights. Um, in any case, Shane was uh, looking to, to make some fundage uh, to get a new knife, and I think... Uh, if I'm sleuthing properly, it was to get uh, his XM18 with the with the grind uh, with the slicer grind. So he posted some knives to sell on Instagram, and this was one of them. And uh, I wanted it, but didn't have the the cash at hand. 
and he was giving it, he, he was selling it for an amazing price. Um, and I just mentioned on Thursday Night Knives a couple of weeks back that uh, I wanted to, to get it and that I had the money and I was going to get it. And he just insisted on sending it to me as a gift. And I so greatly appreciate it. He put his own edge on this S110V and it is a razor sharp knife. Um, so Shane, again, I'm going to thank you again. Thank you so much. You wanted money for these knives because uh, you wanted to put them towards something else. And uh, you just were so generous. You just gave this to me, even against my protests. Um, I guess I didn't protest that hard, but I really, really appreciate it. I love this knife. I will cherish it always. It will go in that category of knives I never get rid of um, because of that sentimental reason. But also, man, what a great knife design. The Manix. I used to have the Manix 2XL. I uh, got rid of that one a long time ago, but always kind of wanted a Manix back in the collection. As a matter of fact, it was a big debate on Thursday Night Knives between the Shaman and the Manix 2, and uh, many people came down on the Manix 2 side. I can't remember where Shane came down. I think he came down on, the, on this side, too, because I just saw he's got an XL now, uh, which looks pretty sweet um, with some aftermarket scales. But anyway, that uh, that ball lock is so strong and it it's evocative of the axis lock. But in in my opinion, um, I think it's stronger. And, and what do I have to go on? Um, nothing really. Just intuition. But uh, they always say trust your gut. And I think uh, I think I'm going to trust my gut on this one. So I've had this for a week now or almost a week. And like I said, it hasn't been out of my pocket. And it's I've been just finding things to cut for this. And man, it is amazing. So happy with this knife. And I love this um sort of melancholy blue. It's not that cheerful blue that we see on most blue knives. It's more of a brooding blue. And I really like it. Pinned construction, so I'll never be able to take this sucker apart. Uh, but that's just fine by me. I'm not much of a tinkerer, I have found. Uh, I'm just, I'm very happy with a knife and never opening it up, never, not opening it, never uh, disassembling it uh, unless I have to. So Shane Gables, thank you so much for this. And be sure to go check out Edgy American on um, on YouTube. He's got such a good channel. He's got such plain talk about knives, about the knife world. Um, and he's just a great guy. So go check out Edgy American. Thank you, Shane. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. So speaking of fidgety, and I guess I wasn't, but this this knife, you'd expect to be fidgety. Um, it's not as fidgety as, say, the Axis Lock because that spring, there's a coil spring in there instead of, instead of the dual um, Omega springs. It's a totally different mechanism. It just... It just actuates in a similar way. Uh, this one to me is is less fidgety than, say, the Axis Lock, but in in being so, also a little more trustworthy to me. You know, that's just how my head is working right now. Um, but these knives that I'm going to show are are the ones that I personally, uh, when I have them in my pocket, uh, I, or I'll just reach into the case and grab them just to fidget with them, just to have them while I'm doing something else to like the worry stone, the proverbial worry stone. Uh, before I get to my list of 10, I want to show you the two that basically introduced me to the concept of fidgeting um, with knives. And that is the first one is, uh, I don't want to call it an also ran uh, because this is, these are like the originals for me, but the SOCOM Elite by Microtech was the first knife I ever had with bearings and Microtech was putting bearings in their pivot without fanfare long before it became fashionable. I discovered, uh, I remember being like, why is this so smooth? This is like, like weirdly smooth. Cause I'd, I'd slow roll it and it would get ahead of me as I slow roll it, get ahead of my thumb and almost pop out on its own. And then I discovered, Oh, you can just pop it out. I know, but it was 2013 or 2014, I guess, when I got this. So a bit of, you know, a bit before knives became fidgets things to me. And, uh, well, those bearings just <clears throat> made all the difference. So this was probably my first fidget knife. And then when I got the 
Riot K2. Uh, when I got this knife, this was my very smoothest knife. It no longer holds that uh, title, but remains the first knife that that just fell shut for me like that, that I, I bought with that sort of in mind. I really got this because it has the most exquisite uh, design. I absolutely love that Tonto blade shape. <clears throat> And uh, it's one of my absolute favorite blade shapes, along with the SOCOM Elite I just showed you. The older Tonto uh, design for the SOCOM Elite in this. Just take the cake for me. Uh, so the first two fidget knives for me were these two in, 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 uh, in reality. That doesn't mean I wasn't opening my cold steels and closing them and learning how to do it all one-handed and having fun doing that. But these, these were a different level. Okay, so for my official list, these are roughly in order of size. Well, not really. But first is the Baby Rhino by Off Grid Knives. Um, and the reason I love this one for fidgeting is that it's so small, it, it disappears in my hand. So it, you can kind of walk down the hall at work and fidget it and it hides easily. <laughs> That's a pretty specific example, but... Uh, I guess that's what I have found myself uh, doing with this because it hides away so easily. And something about the fact that it's not a drop shutty, it's a it's a slam shutty with your with your forefinger. I just like the way it feels uh, to shut it actively with my forefinger and then have the whole thing disappear into my palm. This is a great knife, this off-grid baby rhino with 154 cm blade steel and the same thickness as the adult rhino it just really fills out the hand even though it's essentially a three finger knife um, this household has three of these um, my wife has one that she man she adores it it's the all gray version uh, this one carrie sent to me not too long ago uh, that has the gray and the tan and then i have the all black the baby rhino by off grid i highly recommend it's what uh, uh birdshot iv they call them uh chode knives I know that's dirty, but I think it's funny, and it just seems to fit. Little, small, fat knives like this. And by the way, uh, just because it's a small knife doesn't mean it should be a thin knife. Is, is uh, Much to the contrary, in my opinion, uh, the smaller the knife, the fatter it should be to stay in hand and really give you a full, you know, like I said, three fingers there. It really feels like a, a full grip knife there. It's not going anywhere. So first one, the baby rhino. <clears throat> second, <clears throat> pardon me. Second is the Vero Engineering Synapse. Um, this knife is fidgety for a number of reasons. First of all, it is just smooth as smooth can be. It really is like drop shutty, smooth, um, just lovely action. This is best tech made. And this was the knife that really got me to understand how amazing best tech is i always for some reason assumed that this was made by riot and um and then when i found out it was best tech i thought oh okay so they are top players and in my in my book they are i know riot is is seen as the reigning king of chinese oems uh, but to me best tech gives them a run for their money plus this design uh, by Joseph Vero is just amazing. Uh, that super low profile flipper is very appealing to me. You get all of the um, visceral joy of flipping open a knife without having it uh, peck the, the other things in your pocket and with keeping that uh, profile super clean. Uh, this is a bolster lock and they also offer, I mean, you can tell that Joseph Vero is a fidgeter and a knife lover because on the off side, they offer that little pocket in there. And that is for off-handed or off finger, opposite finger spider, spidey flicking. Jeez, oh man. You know what I mean? Opening it with your swear word finger. <clears throat> and, uh, and then plus... The knife, uh, the grind on this blade is amazing. This is an M390 blade, and uh, it is ground. It's it's a flat grind. It's ground so thin. Um, just an amazing knife. And I discovered last night, 
um, that this one in particular you can front flip. It's definitely an incidental front flipper. That's just because that jimping is so good. Oh, maybe I can't do it with my left hand. Let me let me try it with my right hand. But yeah, see that? You can even front flip it. And, uh, and the working on it is another form of fidget. The one downside to this is that clip that rises up a little bit high. You always feel that in your hand. But in subsequent... Um, iterations of this knife he has knocked down that clip so that's not an issue anymore uh, a weird bit of micarta on this one no matter how much i've oiled it it will the oil just does not take um but first world problems and actually it's become an aesthetic flourish that i i enjoy so the vero engineering uh, even their um double detent slip joints are fidgety they're awesome all right, next up is I mentioned the axis lock, and I have a number of them. I have the Able lock on my uh, on my RSK Mark One Mini RSK Mark One, but but this bug out to me is is king of my axis lock fidget knives. I just love this knife. Uh, everything about this knife I love, especially since I had the uh, I replaced the handle scales from the original blue plastic. Now uh, you can get so many different versions of this, both made by Benchmade and then aftermarket, uh, that there's kind of no, um, unless you just don't like the knife, don't like the size, don't like the blade or whatever it is, there's no excuse not to have a Benchmade bug out because you can get it in so many different flavors now. What a great design. Even the, even the small, they have the small. And there's this debate, who does the best? Um, ambidextrous bar lock <clears throat> and uh you know the axis lock was invented by benchmade and i guess they still are the reigning champs though i have mentioned many times i think the hogue able lock which stands for uh, advanced bar lock enhanced uh is incredible but everyone else has caught up too um so i'm going back to the original this is the one i love to fidget with the most it has a snaggletooth MF on it uh, to match the blue hardware, the blue barrel spacers. I got that because this is a great knife for the inside pocket of a jacket. And uh, when it's in there, first of all, it's nice and light. You could even have it in a blazer. Um, but uh, this has done a lot of duty in my winter, my winter jacket, my um, Duluth Trading Company jacket, and I have the the Snaggletooth MF on there to wave out of the inside pocket, you know, just because. Um, imminently fidgetable, amazingly fit. I keep using that word. I think I'm using it wrongly. <laughs> uh, but very, very fidgety knife, great pocket clip, and um, just a beauty to behold. That's the Benchmade bug out. Next up is the one uh, button lock representative in this list, and that is the new and new to me Mad Tonto by um, Damned Designs and Kaiser Knives. Um, before I get to the fidgetness of it, the blade is amazing. First of all, it's a good looking drop point um, Tonto. That point is dead center down the down the pivot line. And so in a great place to always know where that where that tip is, whether you're using it tactically or using it in a utility um, draw cut way. Uh, it's a great placement for that point. The Yokote, that, that, that secondary tip there and that front um, wedge-like portion is flat ground, but very thin and very sharp flat ground. ground. And then the straight, is really thinly hollow ground. I mean, we're talking Jack Wolf knives, thinly hollow ground. So this knife is an absolute pleasure to cut with. Um, <clears throat> but we're not talking about that. We're talking about fidget. How does it fidget? Well, it fidgets beautifully. Um, I have, I've acquired a number of button lock knives recently and uh, they, I like them. Sometimes they leave me a little cold. Um, <clears throat> But then there's recently been a lot of talk about how they fail easily and got a lot of people spine whacking them on their videos. And uh, I did some extensive spine whacking, not ridiculous, but I, I, uh, you know, got kind of got that in my head, like it might close on me. And this one, 
Uh, the button lock is stout and sturdy as hell. And then you see the the button. You don't have to you don't have to reach or too deeply. You don't have to stick your finger in too deeply to to hit the button. <clears throat> I'm going to rephrase that and just say, I like how the button sits proud and is easily accessible. How's that? Uh, better than the Vostid Raccoon, uh, better than my uh, uh, Wax, Wax, uh, Senkut Watuga. It is really perfect. That button sits up nice and proud. And, you know, there might be the concern that you're going to actually hit it while you're using it um, somehow, uh, maybe like that. But even if you do, it's it's set up in such a way that it's not going to cut you. Uh, but I, I just don't see that happening. And who who puts actual force on the back of the blade when they're using a knife? Unless they're batoning, uh, in which case it's also being uh, shored up by whatever the material is you're cutting through. So it's it's it just doesn't seem to be much of a concern, uh, the button lock closing thing. But to me, to have that button easily accessible... Um, just allows you to um, fidget with it better, <laughs> you know? Uh, the ultimate goal of the button lock is to, yes, lock the blade open. But if you're in that fidget mode, you might just want to have that button easily accessible and not have to hunt too much for it and, and stick your finger too deeply in there to get it to close. So this this Kaiser Mad Tonto kind of saves the button lock for me. For me, button lock is still an automatic thing. I'm like, I, I only really want to see a button lock on a knife like this um, until now, because this uh, Mad Tonto is pretty sweet. Uh, and if you're if you're listening, I just opened up a ProTech TR3, uh, which is an automatic, but also a button lock. So. There you go. And on an automatic, you don't have to worry about that because the spring is constantly uh, giving tension, uh, is putting tension on the blade and keeping it open. So, so there you have it. That's the Mad Tonto by um, Kaiser Knives. I highly recommend it. I got mine at Atlantic Knife and got a great, great price on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next up, not sure if I can fidget with this one with the left. Uh, we'll we'll try. This is the Heretic um manticore x out the front and yeah i'm gonna do this with my right hand here i can do this all day long with my right hand open and close it it's such a smooth smooth uh out the front uh this heretic is uh this is the knife i got on july 1st 2021 when it be, or 2022 i'm sorry when it became legal to carry this in virginia um all the other ones that i had uh I got illegally, I guess. Uh, but, well, I, I guess I didn't get them illegally. I carried them illegally. But then, again, I didn't carry them much. So, water under the bridge, people. But this is uh, so smooth. There are bearings in there um, that uh, underneath that slider. And <clears throat> it allows you to, it allows me to really open and close, open and close in a way that I can't with my um, Microtech um Troodon or my Microtech Ultratech. Now, that being said, I have a feeling my Ultratech was sold to me in the first place on the secondary market because it is especially stiff. So, uh, but you know, as I become stronger, um, <clears throat> it's easier and easier to open. But um, this Manticore is the thing. And uh, the most fidgety of automatic knives would be the out the front where you can where you can shoot it out and then retract it, of course. <clears throat> this one has a beautiful LMAX recurved blade, and that is a nice deep hollow grind. It is a slashy, stabby knife. And then you've got the jimping on the back, which I really like. You don't see jimping much on uh, out the front blade handles or blade knife, out the front blades. And I really like that uh, that feature. And it it does come in handy for maybe. Not the best reason. This one has a bit of rattle, both up and down and side to side. And I know that that tolerances, uh, unless you're getting a G&G &G Hawk deadlock, tolerances on out the front knives are, are such that there is going to be some rattle just because it's got to slide in and out of the handle. And to do so, it needs a little tiny bit of room. Um, 
That said, it, this does rattle just a little bit more than my uh, Microtex, and I'm not sure if that's just this one or if that's their mechanism. Um, but I kind of don't care. I just love such a beauty, and it is a nice one to use uh, because it's so very sharp. Uh, I haven't had too many uses for it, but uh, yeah, little integrated glass breaker also is very comfortable on the thumb if you decide to cap cap the knife with your thumb all right so that is the manticore x that's a large one next up is a newish one for me and that is the dirk pinkerton designed night horse an exclusive but <clears throat> smoky mountain knife works made by beyond edc beyond edc has three tiers of production the beyond edc budget line like this knife the midline asymmetrical where they have um where they feature better blade steels like S35VN and titanium handles. And then the Terramundi, the very top, uh, where they OEM for some uh, for, for designers and really pull out all the stops, if you will. But this knife, whoa. Uh, so that's a four and a quarter inch blade. And that had, ah, see, that just bit me. That has something to do with it. Um, but it is so smooth. It is, it, it's un unbelievably smooth and i have knives like say the um the Towser k by kaiser that is smooth just like this but the blade is shorter so the this accelerates the the drop shut uh like you wouldn't believe and yeah i just i just really i'm gonna use my right hand too i like to do this flick it out you know and then flick it back in all you got to do is just barely touch the the liner lock and it and give it a little whip and it comes whipping back in um i don't have too many liner locks on this list um just regular straight up liner locks but this one with the bearings and the long blade and the superior manufacturing and design is just amazing if you look at the tip you might notice it's a little bit reprofiled uh, that's because i broke the tip and then sanded it into position um, or sanded it into shape. Um, but so I do have the um, titanium version of this, but this one is fidgetier, I must say. Uh, though the titanium one I have is a prototype, so it might might not uh, have the full treatment that the uh, production release has. Uh, but this one is just amazing. It was between this and the Boker Smatchet designed by Chuck Gadritis uh, that were kind of when I was going through my collection looking to fill this spot of large liner lock on bearings. It was between that and this, and this one won out. This is a great knife. Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive, as I mentioned. And if you want this Navaja inspired knife, uh, you can get it in that uh, fancier titanium version for 150 bucks, or you could spend 30 bucks, $30, and get this uh, oh, 14C28N. Uh, version <clears throat> with G10. Uh, I, I do not like to do the math on human suffering <laughs> and and how uh, this can come to us for 30 bucks. Maybe I shouldn't say human suffering. Maybe I should just say uh, under compensation, uh, no doubt. Um, but hey, their economy is different and I'm, I'm not even going to try and pretend to understand it. Okay, next up is from our good friends at Spyderco and that's the Yo Jumbo. The Yo Jumbo with its, with its, um, this is now, this is not on bearings, believe it or not. Um, it's not on bearings, but it is super smooth and it's got that, um, compression lock. We all know compression locks are very fidgetable and very fidgety. Um, but this one with the long four inch blade really, really does it because the weight of the blade automatically kind of sends it back into the handle. And I, I have the Yojimbo and I love the Yojimbo. Um, but the larger size makes it more fidgety to me. Your mileage may vary, uh, especially considering the, um, the little, uh, what do you call that? The tang of the blade, not the tang, the, um, whatever this little Ricasso part kind of protrudes into the path of the lock, but it, it does not affect uh, me. I feel it, I guess sometimes, but I just, 
I just actuate the lock and let the let the blade fall in and um and proceed to drive everyone around me crazy and intimidate them because look at that blade. Holy mackerel. You push this into something, it widens out immediately. That is a big hole you're going to make with this thing. Hollow ground and very, very thin and slicey. And of course, that straight edge shape uh, really pulls the material into, into, the, into the cut, especially on a slash at the tip. This one I did a little bit of modification to. Uh, there was a, a, a mid-handle two-finger partition peak here that just was, didn't need to be there and just kind of annoying. Uh, and luckily, it didn't have the steel liner um, up into that area, so I could easily sand that down and give myself a smoother handle, as I could do with this right here if I felt like it. But um, I think I like that in, in there just to kind of book and my hands, my medium size hands. If you have big, uh, big meat hooks, you might want to sand that off too and give yourself, uh, you know, a little bit more room without feeling boxed in. I also put the MXG gear clip on there, button screws, doesn't bother me. Plenty of space there. You know, we all like the inset, uh, we all like the inset clip with the flat screws, but here the button screws work just fine. The fidgety, the imminently, oh man, I'm going to stop. The super fidgety, ah, the super fidgety compression lock um, does it best on the larger knives, if you ask me. Okay, next up is the Vostied Bellamy. The Vostied Bill Bellamy. Uh, this thing is amazing with its various ways of opening. You've got the flipper. You've got the, um, the fuller. Well, let me do that with this hand. You got the fuller for the reverse flick. And then you've got this uh, great front flipper. And so three ways to open, three ways to fidget, and a great drop shutty action on those um, with those bearings. Now, this one is really appealing to me because the materials are so awesome. This is M390 blade steel, hollow ground, very thin and slicey hollow ground. M390 blade in a carbon fiber handle, a unique and very nice looking carbon fiber carbon fiber handle, if you ask me. Uh, and it comes in at 135 last I checked. It's it's an inexpensive, um, high high design, um, excellent material knife for a very good price. Uh, that of course is the theme with uh, the Chinese knives. As I mentioned before, their economy is different and they don't you know, you can get their stuff for a lot less. Um, but if this is your taste, it is an excellent, excellent carry knife. It's light also. And uh, you've got three and a half inches of blade. So it is in that perfect spot where it's not too big and not too small, but super, super fidgety. I just like watching myself fidget with it. All right, putting it back to get the second to last knife, which is uh, at this point, a modern classic, and that is the Shark Lock. Anything with a Shark Lock, the Demco 8020. As a matter of fact, today I carried the 8020.5 just for the fidget factor and the unique shark's foot blade. This one is a machine ground 8020. Um, so that means the blade bevel was machine ground. And Man, it is awesome. The blade itself is thick and robust, so the weight of it gives it an even um, more uh, fidgety feel because uh, the the weight of the blade kind of pulls it right back into the handle. I love this knife. This one was a lavender lavender pants, uh, who I haven't uh, seen around in quite a while. Uh, helped me get this knife, and, and I greatly appreciate it from Rivers Edge Cutlery in Ohio. And uh, he saw they had like six of them in stock. He sent me a text in the middle of work. Uh, I was in a meeting and he sent it to me and I was like, oh, I have something very important. <laughs> I left and said, yes, get it for me. I'll send you the money. Um, it was more. I don't know what that meeting was about anymore, but I do know I still have this knife. So I was right. It was important. So anything with the shark lock, but uh, definitely the 80-20 with that weighted blade 
is very fidgety and just an extremely awesome knife all the way around. Plus, love that red handle. Okay, last up. Um, I can't do this under the knife cam, but it's the original, the original fidget knife. Can you guess what it is? The original, the very first fidget knife. Um, I had a martial arts teacher who used to call them um, martial art, martial artists pacifier. And that is the Bally song. Is there anything more fidgety than a Bally song? No, probably not. Now, I'm not talking about the the stuff that the Bally boys do at Blade Show, which is very impressive. And um, uh, I'm just talking about just opening it to use it is so uh, it's just a fidgety experience um, inherently unless you open it like this. Which no one has ever done in the history of knives. Uh, it is just about as fidgety as it gets. And there are different ways to open it. Of course, you know, there are different ways to flip it around and do aerobatics with it. Wait, how did I almost did that the dangerous way? You know, you can do it. You can open it for use in many, many different ways. I know like two or three. Well, I guess three. Um, I got one of these in high school, not the Lucha. This is the Kershaw Lucha, but I got a Bally song in high school and uh, learned how to use it. And, you know, my wife and I used to have a Bally song on our coffee table when we were at you know, without, without kids. And, uh, yeah, there is a thrill, uh, back in the old day to, <laughs> to see my wife, you know, we're sitting there watching TV and she just reaches down, <laughs> opens up the, the Bally song. And I don't know, it cuts the, the foil off a bottle of wine or whatever we used it for, uh, all sorts of illicit purposes. Um, yeah, Bally song. If you want one and you want it a little bit nicer than than your average or inexpensive one, get the Lucha. It's just over a hundred bucks. It comes in a couple of blade shapes at this point, and it is so well done. I mean, this has really, really scratched my itch. I know there are a lot of uh, sweet, really, really nice, expensive ones out there for the Bally song collectors and the Bally song uh, flippers for whom the, the flipping part is the main part. Um, but if that's not your bag and you just want a usable, but uh, full size, I mean, traditionally the Bally song blades are about four and a quarter inches long. So you want something like that, get the Lucha. This thing is awesome. And they make a trainer that has the same weight and same, um, uh, same form factor as, as the Lucha. So you can, you can practice on a practice knife that is that emulates exactly the knife you'll be using all right well thank you so much for joining me on this uh, journey through my great fidget knives uh what are your favorite fidget knives let me know uh, i've heard people like greg medford says a real man doesn't fidget with a knife and um thank you i'll take that on advisement but uh i i just think that sometimes we need to expel a little bit of nervous energy and i'd rather do that than uh then rock my knee up and down to, 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 to you know, that thing or, or uh, flip pencils or anything like that. For me, I'd rather do it with a knife. How about you? All right. Uh, please be sure to download the show to your favorite podcast app so you can listen whilst on the go. And then join us on Sunday for uh, another great interview. And then, of course, there's Thursday Night Knives. Tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch. And if you want to help support the show, just zap the QR code right there, and it'll take you right to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast mm -hmm.